All right, let's continue. So um, I'm going to work on my sky. Now, the way I envision this, it's um, it's sunrise. So the sun is just coming up. So um, it's coming up from above the over the horizon line. So I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, shading my sun first. Uh, obviously, I'm going to use a yellow. Um, it's going to be brighter yellow closer to the vanishing point and as I move a little outward it's going to fade to more of like a white yellow um, less sort of harsh because the sun isn't quite fully out yet so you can see um, I'm stopping at my horizon line I cannot go below my horizon line because below my horizon line is the land so I am pressing pretty hard I do want this to be a pretty bold sunrise and it's coming out from behind the trees as well so um, where I can see it behind the trees we're gonna have it sort of peek out from behind the bushes or the uh, trunk and the leaves So there's what my sunrise looks like now and as I um, as it rises and as it moves further out into the sky it uh, sort of appears a little bit lighter so this was the original edge I had intended for my sunrise so I'm just gonna erase the pencil marks now and I'm just gonna ease up on my pressure with my yellow This will help me later as I add my blue from my sky, it'll help me be able to uh, sort of blend the sun into the sky a little bit like it does look like in real life, not just um, sun, sky, with a very bold sort of difference between them. All right, so I've lightened up on my pressure here. I've eased off on it. Now's a good time to think about what I wanna do for my sky. So it's a beautiful, uh, day the sun is rising so the sky is already quite blue so I'm going to take out a few of my blues here uh, that I'm going to consider using for my sky now of course just like with the trees and the grass and the road and everything else um, the color of the sky will get lighter as I get closer to the vanishing point uh, because it's further away whereas the sky over here by the trees and above these buildings is going to be significantly darker um, because it's closer to me so before I begin I'm just going to test out my blues here so I know which ones are darker and which ones are lighter which is a good idea to do on some goose paper or in your sketchbook if you'd like all right, so I'm going to start with my darker blue um, around the outside of my um, cityscape here. Uh, and you can see I am going to continue shading in one direction, at least that's my plan, and hopefully I'll remember to do that uh, as I go along. Sky stops at the horizon line because the horizon line is where the land and the sky meet. So that's where it stops. I'm not pressing too hard right now because I don't want it to be um, set in stone quite yet because I'm, I'm sort of still thinking about how I want my sky to look. So I'm lining up on my pressure here because um, in this area I think I'm going to be switching to a lighter value of blue because as I'm getting closer to the vanishing point it should uh, lighten up a bit. So I'm going to switch now to uh, my second value here. And I'm going to go over some of that other area that I already left sort of lighter pressured to blend in this next blue so it doesn't look too harsh of a difference. Okay, and you can see um, I'm shading in the same direction, but I'm kind of going in a circular motion, just like the sun. I'm going around the sun in a circular motion. You do want to consider ahead of time if there are clouds in your sky. Um, I did plan to have clouds in my sky, but I, I, I didn't plan ahead, so I haven't left the areas blank. Um, I may still try to add some clouds. Um, actually, I think I'll just add birds later. But uh, clouds is definitely an option, and of course, as they get closer to the vanishing point, they become smaller, significantly smaller. So as I'm getting closer to the vanishing point with my sky here, I'm switching to my lighter value. 